Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Lacey, I'm the owner of Milky Candles and I make videos about life in my 30s. I just did my makeup so there's probably <laughs> makeup all over me. I'm about to film a video just about like sort of the steps to getting started in your business or like the steps that I took to get started in my business. So I'm really excited to film that. Last week I did not upload a video at all. I felt so guilty about because I love sticking to a schedule because it makes me feel good and I feel like I'm reliable and I like a lot, there's a lot of value I place on being a reliable human, neither here nor there. So I figured um, I might try to squeeze two in this week or um, maybe I'll just skip the week and just let it be. You know, I already did it though. So if you're watching this video, it already happened. We have two pop-ups. We have a pop-up tomorrow and then a week from tomorrow. So I have been getting ready. A couple of different things have happened. Um, thank you for being gracious for those of you who um, were not bothered by me not posting a video. I'm, I'm very lucky to have, um, I think like the best YouTube audience dare I say. We went through um, some big hiccups in our household and I needed time to process and recover. And I don't think I fully have done that because it's, I don't do that very quickly or efficiently. Um, I need to get Ash inside because he's eating dirt. Couple things, aside from my personal life, hitting the fan uh, a couple weeks ago, I also have been experiencing an excruciating amount of pain in my right foot. I have fallen arches in both my feet. And growing up, I just sort of, like my feet go in like this when I walk, like they just sink because my arch doesn't support me. But I've trained myself my whole life to just walk on the edges so that my feet don't feel the consequences of that. I don't, I don't know if it's 30 or what the hell happened, but all of a sudden my foot was like, we're gonna address this. So my foot has been in, an enormous amount of pain for probably like two months. Do as I say, not as I do. Ever since I quit teaching, I haven't had health insurance. So my fiance put me on her health insurance. I went to the doctor and she was like, this yes is a problem. Um, it becomes a bigger problem when you start to feel it. it what's gonna happen is it's gonna shoot up to your knee. And she was like, we don't want that. So we should do physical therapy before we get there. Guys, I'm trying to film. I've done physical therapy before my lower back. I think that it's really helpful, but it is expensive even when it's billed to insurance and I don't have that kind of money right now. So um, I we decided that we'll do like a five week check-in after I like wear my inserts, do like warm a, a warm compress whenever I'm like on my feet for a long time. Ash, can you leave everyone alone? You are a harasser. If I'm gonna, if it's gonna be like a really heavy foot traffic-y kind of day, take um, 100 milligrams, 100 something of Tylenol every two, nope, not every two, every eight hours. So that's what I've been doing and it was fine. She also gave me some exercises to do, but <sighs> Ash knows how to use the bell now. He doesn't do it when he needs to go potty, but he does it when he wants to go back outside and eat bird poop under the tree. Yeah, go chase the kitty. That aside, I also started, these two stories kind of come together. I also started feeling really terrible about my weight gain. Not because I don't think I look good. Hold on. Oh boy. That's definitely like a small factor. I, I definitely don't look like what I would want to look like. But aside from that, like I feel sluggish. I feel like I'm not testing my body to its limits. Not that I wanna do that like all the time, but like I'm just not taking advantage of the fact that like I'm an able-bodied human in so many different ways. So I've started really gaining a new appreciation for movement. And what's funny is in the past, it's like, I don't know how to work out. And there's a very specific way that I think a workout should be and if I can't do it this much this time or whatever it may be then I shouldn't do it at all and now my approach is so different I just want to move I want to move I want to do challenges I want to run miles I want to like do different things different weeks um so I started a little fitness journal where I'm just like keeping track of like my strengths and things like that like beating my mile time and stuff like that so that has been cool but ever i've been running a mile every single day because i've been trying to beat my mile time and just like push myself and see what i can do because sounds disgusting to say but like it's been fun 
my foot at first was like, girl, what are we doing? My foot now, like literally three to four days in, my foot feels so much better. I have been stretching my foot, like doing the ABCs, like with my toes, that's like a, a stretch, um, like pulling my toes back to like stretch that arch. And um, I've been running, I've been using, I've been flexing the muscle and my foot feels so good. I've also been wearing inserts, which I did before I saw my doctor. My doctor was like, definitely keep doing that. But it's just so, I mean, I don't think my foot is healed by any means because sometimes it does still hurt. But it's just, it's interesting that like physical therapy is the first thing, but like exercising it is not one of the things mentioned. Do you know what I mean? And maybe it's because like we're worried about pushing it too far or whatever, whatever. But like just running a mile every day, my foot has been amazing. Additionally, I feel so good throughout the day because I I have like this weird amount of energy that I haven't had before. And at night I'm sleeping so much harder because I'm then expending a lot more energy at the same time. I don't know the science behind that, but that's just how I feel. And additionally, I might be crazy and maybe it's the braids, but like, I feel like my face looks a little bit slimmer. And if it doesn't, you don't need to tell me. Just let me think it because that's what's most important. Something else that's been so interesting about this whole workout situation is I used to prioritize my hair over my workout or over it like being sweaty or being in a, a situation where it's too hot and too sweaty. Like even if I'm like sunbathing, I have prioritized my hair my entire life. That's just how it's always been. My hair <laughs> is the frizziest hair known to mankind when an ounce of moisture hits it. Like you don't even recognize my head of hair. It turns into something completely different. And so I've always been afraid of my scalp sweating and running and doing that kind of stuff. So in the beginning, I honestly was just, that's a really low airplane. I was putting my hair in two, you guys have heard me talk about this literally forever, but two cornrows and then I was just wearing it in a low bun like for the whole week, just, let it out and put in a low bun and it's just stretched and whatever. But my hair wasn't feeling good because it was starting to feel like it was nodding, almost like it was starting to lock up because I wasn't separating my hair. Um, and so last night I just got the random bug up my butt to just braid my hair. So we have braids today. They took me four hours. I did not mean to do them this small, but I'm glad that I did. For the first time in my entire life my whole life i am 30 years old i am prioritizing moving my body and working up a sweat before my hair and that statement alone sounds so silly but i think there's a lot of people out there that identify with that so this one's for you i'm gonna see how long i can rock the braids for um we're gonna drive up to Washington in two weeks from now. So I'm hoping that they will last two weeks and then I'll just let them down and then do it again when I go to Washington or maybe I'll straighten it. I don't know. I do plan on, my parents have a gym upstairs. They have like a guest bedroom that they've turned into a gym. Actually, Atocha and I turned it into a gym for my parents. They did like the painting and stuff and we were like, can we like spruce it? Can we like do the things? My dad was like, yeah, go for it. So um, I do plan on using that when I'm in Washington. And we are, since we're driving, we're bringing our dogs. So like taking Ash on walks and Roxy, cause they're like the two best walkers. Kira hates walks and Penny likes it in the beginning and then like throws herself on the ground midway through. Yeah, I just plan on being like active and hoping that my, my dad will be a little bit active with me. My fiance has started working out again. She had a year of pain in multiple different parts of her body um like kidney stones she got her gallbladder removed she has osteoarthritis in her lower back i mean it's just like things kept going for her so she has started working out again my sweet mom has like been doing so much walking on her treadmill and i don't know i think we've all just sort of like like everything around me has been and my best friend has been working out a lot she's really inspired me don't think i've ever told her but maddie you definitely inspire me. So we're doing a challenge together right now. Just like a lower body workout challenge. I obviously would love to see physical changes. Like that would be amazing, but that isn't my goal anymore, which oddly enough, I think is gonna make it 
a lot more sustainable for me to be in a different mindset because what I've done in the past clearly hasn't worked before. So that's it. <laughs> that's all I got to say. What are we thinking about the braids? Do we like them? Also, this is a little bit long. I think I'm going to grow it out just a little bit because I don't want the back shaped anymore. I want like a cute little boop down to a point, but we have not had luck doing it ourselves. And I don't want to go get it done. I, I just, I don't want to spend that money. We are letting it grow so that we can then part it and do it the way that we want because parting it helps make it easier versus like just trying to outline it with the clippers. We've tried it twice and it just hasn't worked. Anyway, that's where my life is right now. So um, I am gonna put on some real clothes and then we're gonna get some stuff done today. I also got brides, a bridesmaid dress for my sister's wedding coming up in June and I got a medium and a small. <laughs> I need to try them on, I haven't tried them on yet. But um, I am gonna return the one that doesn't fit. This is the medium and I think this, honestly, I think the small is gonna work. But it's just a flowy olive color. My sister had like no rules. She was like, whatever dress just has to be long, no patterns. And there can't be like more than one dress that's the same color. So like, I chose olive green. All right, it's 11.49 and I'm still finishing my coffee. I woke up really late because I was doing this last night. We're gonna put it in here for like 15 seconds. What I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm actually, <laughs> What I'm gonna do next is clean up a pile of pee that Ash just did. He comes inside to pee. I can't talk about it anymore. And then we're gonna figure out what we're taking tomorrow to the pop-up. I also, these are the best like yoga pants ever. I also am someone who just feels like really weird about when things like squeeze their thighs because I was born with hereditary cellulite. And I feel so confident in these. They come in three colors, green, gray, like a charcoal and black. Get over there and buy them. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. Here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna take the lid off. We are gonna start thinking about what candles we are gonna bring. We are 100% bringing Breda Blanket. This actually feels like not a good situation. Um, we're gonna bring Brayden a blanket. It usually is a good seller. So two, three, we're gonna bring 10, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, they also, the pop-up that we're doing this at, they want us to, they're going to buy some stuff that we have left over. So we want to bring a little bit more so that they can buy what they want to sell there. And then we'll bring the sample, which is a little bit yellow. So we're not going to pack this yet. We're just going to spruce it up. So we will definitely bring braided blanket. I'm gonna bring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight Milky. Milky doesn't sell well online, but it sells well in person. So I am gonna bring it. So I am, I'm gonna bring six. And then we'll put the sample on the side. Okay, this lid is clear. So I keep stepping on it. And then we'll bring white tea and jasmine, of course, because everyone loves white tea and jasmine. So we're gonna bring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I do wanna bring 10 of those. So two of them are gonna have to go into a different box. Okay, this box is full. So for classics, so we have, we have a couple different lines. Classics, cologne, brown girl collection, and then whatever seasonal ones that we have. I don't know why. I don't know 
I'm out of breath. So we'll bring our big bags. Well, they're not actually the biggest ones that we have, but they are bigger. Oh my God. Okay, bags packed. We will bring room sprays, but I like to put those in cardboard boxes because the edges are like complete 90 degree angles so they don't like fall over and whatnot. So this box is done. Box number two. Okay, we're putting the two white tea and jasmines in here. I'm gonna wait to pack black moss and cedar because I actually have a bunch that I need to box. So I'm gonna put Desert Blooms in here. Desert Blooms is a limited edition. It smells so good. I'm putting the samples to the side, or I don't know, testers, whatever you wanna call them, to the side so that I can kind of like wipe them down and then shoot my heat gun on it because when they're outside and exposed and people pick them up and smell them, they just don't look as nice after a while. So I think we're going to get a lot of people that like it because it's like juicy but floral at the same time and it's the desert. People like that the name fits where they live. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna do eight though. I wanna leave some for the event next week because we don't have any more blue vessels. Oh wait, didn't I just make? I already boxed them. Wait, I'm confused. No, that's it, that's all we have. Okay, so we will definitely bring those. Um, we'll do pink peonies. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just gonna bring all seven. So this is our spring collection now. Actually, I think I'm just gonna do six. We're even, even in the bucket purposes. And then I, I'm not gonna bring rose water. Rose water typically does better on like Etsy than it does in person, but I am gonna do sea salt and vetiver. Oh wait, but I only need two more. We'll do eight. Then we'll throw in some small bags for people who just want to purchase the room sprays, which I will need to pack, and then we'll put in some larger bags for people who want to buy a lot of candles, which typically isn't a lot. Guys, I'm, I'm fucking sweating. So I just buy bags off Amazon and then I stamp them. Um, same stamp for every bag. So it's just our little logo. It says Milky Candles LLC. Take control of your space. So I'll just lay these flat on top. Box number two, done. Where's the lid? All I need to pack are the cologne scents and I'm gonna bring melanin this time. I usually don't sell melanin whenever I bring it. I don't have enough, don't touch my hair. Well, maybe, I mean. Okay, I'm gonna bring all of Brown Sugar Kisses and melanin. We're gonna do two that represent the Brown Girl collection. Okay, here we go. Oh shit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool, that's it for now. So we've got the boxes here. And how cute is this little card holder? I cannot wait to bring this. It's just, I don't love my cards, but it's fine. I just get over the style quickly whenever I, okay, well. It works when you have a good amount in there, I promise. And per usual, I need to charge my card reader. So this will be charging all night. I don't, it doesn't need all night, but I just do it anyway, just in case. All right, we are gonna cut some wicks. Then we're gonna put labels on our candles before I make breakfast. The reason why I wanna do this is because I prefer when the label has been, I don't know if this is like the right way of saying it, but when the label has enough time to be on the candle, because sometimes these labels will like bubble a little bit and then I have to just like smooth out the air pockets. So, um, I like to have a bit of time between putting the labels on and boxing them. So that's what we're doing right now. I use the one by four 
durable white film labels, but let me tell you a little secret from Avery, I should say. The um, chemical resistant ones are actually, they're more expensive, yes, but they are so much better. I've never seen a label bubble, and I think it's because the labels are just thicker. So uh, in the future, I will definitely be going with those. Again, they're more expensive, but I don't really care that much. I mean, I print my own labels anyway, and I just have an inkjet printer. Uh, I've also gotten questions about what molds I used for my cement candles. So I use the tulip shape. I get it off Etsy, but they do have their own website. Their Etsy name used to be, or like their brand name used to be, let me see. Uh, maker, they are called Maker Shapes. So again, they have a website. They also have an Etsy. I love them. I love their customer service. I have used them forever. They are the sweetest people ever. I recently actually sent them over some candles because I was like, you guys don't even know how much your vessels or your molds have like transformed my business. So I love them. Go support them. And I will say that like with tax and shipping and everything, to buy the mold for the vessel and the lid itself comes to about $80 for one vessel and lid mold. That seems expensive for people. Um, but for me, once you have them, you have them. They're such good quality that I haven't experienced any that have like broken or anything. So, or ripped. So I personally, Think that it is worth the money. I've used plenty of molds from Amazon and just for like my own projects and I usually have to end up either repurchasing it because it ended up uh, ripping or sometimes what happens is the inside starts to like deteriorate, deteriorate, deteriorate and yeah so I just feel like these are higher quality. If you just look up tulip silicone mold, candle mold or whatever, you're gonna see a ton of different options. So just, you know, do your research guys, do your research. I see a lot of people who ask a lot of questions that honestly a simple Google search could fix. I'm not a gatekeeper by any means, but I'm also a firm believer in if you want something, you'll figure out a way to get it. So while I do like delivering information, I also think it's worth people going and doing their own research because it proves to themselves that they are really wanting to do what it is that they want to do. I mean, the amount of research that I've done for my own business is insane. And while I think that there's some information that is harder to find, I do think that a lot of questions that I get are very easy to answer by a quick Google search. So just, you know, let the internet be your bestie, my friends. And I know I'm on the internet, <laughs> I'm aware. But a lot of questions I'm asking, or I'm getting asked, are readily available already on the interwebs. Those are great. We're gonna go pick out some lids in the garage and then I'll be back. That sounded like I was ungrateful for people looking at me and seeing me as someone who has answers for stuff. I don't. I love when people ask me questions. I will answer all slash most questions. Um, but as a business owner, it's really important that you learn the skill of doing research. Because you're going to do it throughout your whole business. So you might as well start now. All right. This is where we have... The lids. I just finished filming, editing, and I'm currently uploading the video for Monday. It's all about like the steps that I took to form my own business. It's not legal advice by any means, but it, it has some of like the language that I feel like I don't hear enough on YouTube when it comes to like forming a business. So that is uh, in the top right corner if you would like to check that out. And now what I'm gonna do is wrap these candles. I was gonna do that before filming and then I didn't but let's check on the labels so this is a good example this has kind of bubbled you see those little bubbles all i have to do is smooth it out 
and it's done, but something I don't have to think about with the other labels, which is why I want to move away from these labels in the future. So I use um, honeycomb paper. I don't stretch it out, but I do just like the um, kind of like flexibility of it more than just like regular paper when I wrap my candle. So here's what I do. I do about a foot and I have 12 candles I need to wrap. So I'm technically going to do six of these. I'm actually, I'm going to do five because I have two that are already over there. And then I cut them in half. And then I'll show you how I wrap. Okay, first what I'm gonna do is build a box. These are the four by four pinstripe boxes from New Line. What I'll usually do is I'll build all of them at the same time, fill them all with a little bit of crinkle paper at the bottom at the same time, wrap them all at the same time, stuff them with crinkle paper at the same time, and then tape them at the same time. Anyway, so this is though just for one. So I'm gonna fill the bottom with a little bit of crinkle paper, enough for a padding, but not too much so that it doesn't fit. Then I'm gonna take the candle, taking the paper, taking the lid off, and I'm going to wrap just like that. So we're looking at the butt, the butt of the candle, I'm going to go ahead and just fold in like that. I'm not going to tape it. Dust off the lid, put the lid on. I'm going to grab a piece of tape. I'm going to fold the top just like I folded the bottom. So it looks like this. That was not smart of me. And tape the top. I would like to get little stickers with milky candles on it, but for now tape is fine because there's branding all over. I'm gonna put it in the box. I have my bucket of crinkle paper here and I'm essentially just gonna shove all of the corners. So this is what it looks like. All four corners have been shoved with little bits of crinkle paper. And then I'm just gonna put some on the top. Again, not too much. I want it to close nicely. I just want it to be padded, protected. Close the top. These are, I think they're 2.5 by five labels from Avery. These are just your typical white, non-removable labels. Yep, just matte white paper. I like the pinstripe boxes because it helps me put my label on because I can use the lines as a guide. So I do the top, then I do the side. And I love my labels because up here it's all about like who we are and then down here this is just like the these are the notes that I made up with and then this is always a cute little sometimes seductive or funny um just little narrative about the candle or more so like a monologue <laughs> I guess like this is who I am I remind you of this. Okie doke the day is going so fast we are back we finished packing black moss and cedar so now I'm gonna put them in here. So we're gonna do uh, one, two, let's do eight, three, four, <clears throat> five, six, seven, eight. Gray weather. We'll do one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do five, six. Definitely the cove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna bring six, four. And then I'm gonna bring four melanin because that's what fits in here. That's this one. So that's all the candles. All candles are now packed. So this time we're gonna do buy two candles, get a room spray for free. I'm trying to get rid of these room sprays because I wanna switch up my bottles. Four, and then we're gonna pack the tester, which is over here. I take off the cap, and that's how I know which one is the sample. Okay, so I have stuff out in the garage that's ready to go into the car. I have 
candles, room sprays, tablecloth, um, pot and pouches. I have candle care cards. I have all of that kind of stuff. I've got stickers. The only, the last two things I want to do, number one, I want to make like a Mother's Day coupon, like come shop with us for Mother's Day. Um, second thing I want to do is make, what did I want to do? Oh, I just wanted to melt down the testers. And that's it, that's all I have to do, I feel so good. Yeah, we'll show you the setup tomorrow, early in the morning. Okay, so I actually had to cut all of this audio because I got a copyright strike from the song playing in the background, but usually what happens is we get there, we set up the table. Atosha is really good at organizing all of the candles because when people come and buy them, she grabs the candles and I carry on a lot of the conversation. We've got, um, one of our vessels or two of them actually just to show like what we can do with them and then we have coffee to reset the nostrils i was also talking about how it was actually a slower event than normal and i think it's because it was the day after saint patrick's day i think people were probably pretty hungover and um yeah i think it just was a little bit slower than we were used to but it was still a, a good event um you'll hear me talk about it in a little bit Desert Blooms and The Cove are the two newest candles, and those are the ones that actually were, that were selling the most. So we were really excited about that. We like hearing people's feedback, um, especially with new stuff in person, because it gives us a feel of what to expect. All right, so it is the next day. Yesterday, I was so wiped out. The amount of social interaction that happens at pop-ups, because you're just, you're on the whole time. It's just a lot we had a lot of fun we met some amazing souls we sold about i think it was like 790 dollars worth of candles and room sprays we have done that event three times now that's the least amount that we made but it's such a good um, i mean it's the experience in itself is just always so positive that like there really isn't anything to complain about. And Diggit Gardens ended up buying a bunch of our stock that we had left over. So we'll spend the next week getting ready for the next event. And then the next day we are going to be heading out to Washington. So um, we'll be driving there and then driving back after about a week. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content that you enjoy. Sorry, we're like cleaning and doing laundry in the background. Um, we're about to go out to lunch right now though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you even if you don't love me back and I will see you in my next video. Bye.